So it can be very difficult to thrive in an environment that you don't totally understand, which is probably why my soap opera acting career hasn't taken off yet. But I thought we'd take a little bit of time just to talk about the official key of 2020, the key of D, and just really kind of do a deep dive into just different tips and tricks you can do, what that key consists of, what it even means to play in a key, and why you might want to learn some of this stuff, all right? So I am using this carbon fiber close guitar for this because it is ND destructible. And we're gonna start with the chords, all right? There are six main chords in any key, and the key of D it just so happens to be that they're very easy, which is like, a lot of classic rock songs are in the key of D, like every ACDC song, because of like some really cool stuff we can do. So we're gonna get to that in a minute, but first let's just go over the main chords in the key of D, all right? If we talk about the notes that make up these chords, we would get these right here. D, E, F sharp. G, A, B, C sharp, and D. So first of all, it's just a note that has two sharps, F sharp and C, okay? D major is gonna be the one chord in this key, all right? Probably already know how to play this chord. Middle finger two E, ring finger three B, pointer finger two G. The two chord is gonna be E minor. The three chord is F sharp minor, okay? Which is kind of like the Achilles heel in the key of D. Uh, such a hard chord, but guess what? We're gonna do another thing where we actually play an F sharp minor seven add four. That's just a really much easier way to play F sharp minor. We're gonna get there in a second, all right? So then we have G major. That's the four chord. A major is the five chord. B minor is the six chord. C sharp diminished, half diminished is the seven chord. Okay, so first of all, you might want to be able to do that just to be able to, you know, if, you, if this is the key that you want to write in. All these chords are going to be the main chords you're going to use. D major, E, F sharp minor, G major, A major, B, and then if you're saucy, get that C sharp minor seven flat five or half diminished in there, okay? So all that means is all those chords you can build just by using those notes that we played right here. And again right here, this is the fifth fret of the A string. This is the D root of the scale. And we just go five, seven, nine, five, seven, nine, six, seven. The reason that I ended up making this uh, the official key of 2020, aside from being the popular vote of the people early on in the year, is because there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do in the middle of the fretboard in relation to the open chords of it, okay? So real quick, let's just talk about the main chords and why like so many ACDC songs and uh, just classic rock songs. This kind of move you can do right here, right? So if we play the D major chord, like a suspended chord actually, so your ring finger's right here and your pointer finger's here, three B and two G, you can use your middle finger as kind of like a free agent to get that G on there, right? So it's really easy to switch from a D to a G to an A. All right? Something like that is really, really easy to do without a lot of effort. You're kind of playing open chords. It sounds great on acoustic. It sounds great on electric. It sounds great on a carbon fiber guitar. Just being able to change from a D to an A to a G, or even just getting that low G razzmatazz going on there, and then back to A, always resolving on D, okay? So it's really easy just to play those major chords, the one, four, and five chord in a key. And again, a lot of songs are just, just those chords, right? A lot of classic rock songs really across any genre. Now the nice thing about, besides just being able to move around like that in that one position in this key, is if we take some of the notes that make up those chords, like let's start with the A major chord. If we play A on the low E string right here, we can play an arpeggio just the notes that are in that chord just by going five, seven to nine, seven, A, right? That's just a different way to play an A major chord. And it's not so far away that it's hard to get to, right? And again, if we were to do another chord, one of the other major chords, let's go D major, the exact same thing just starts on 5A, right? So we've got the A chord, the D chord, and then what else? The G chord is right here, the fifth fret on the D string. There's the octave G, it's the same thing. So right in the middle of the fretboard, the meat of the guitar fretboard, we really have all the major chords that you can do. And all that comes from, you know, like the scale that we showed earlier, but it's just a really easy way to kind of run things into 
different things that you'll use in a song, right? The number one thing, I think, when you're thinking of playing in a key, especially if you're playing lead, is finding out where the relative minor is, okay? And that's always going to be on the sixth degree. So what's the sixth degree in the key of D? We can count forward through the whole scale. D is one, two, three, four, five, six. That is a B note. So B is where the minor pentatonic, the relative minor, is going to exist. So if we just kind of add these notes here, this is going to be the next thing we're going to do, is we're going to add B minors, pentatonic scale. Right here, so 7, 10, 7, 9, 7, 9, 7, 9, 7, 9 7, 10, 7, 10. Okay, so I don't want to make this a full pentatonic lesson, but if you just Google pentatonic licks, you can put a lot of different ones in any pentatonic scale, right? So this is where the pentatonic scale exists that goes with the key of D. Here's where all those major arpeggios exist that go with all the chords here. And then here's where all the open chords exist. So that's why it's really like a very cool chord to really do kind of a, a cool key to do a deep dive and just try to understand as much as you can about the key and how everything works, right? Great way to do that is, like I said before, play the chord and then play the arpeggio into it. And especially when you play these arpeggios, see like when I did that, here's that D major, right? D, I'm taking the second note and the D scale, going to his major third and ending up on the seventh fret of uh, the D string right here. This is really putting me in prime pentatonic position. So it's super easy to go from the chord to the arpeggio into your pentatonic licks and stuff if you have a lick vocabulary, so to speak. Okay, so these are just a few different examples of how we're starting to connect a lot of these different things. The great thing about this is once you start learning all the chords and be able to transition to them more fluidly, then you can kind of like just jump back and forth in between stuff, right? So let's take something about that F sharp minor, right? In uh, books and stuff, a lot of times you'll see this as barring the entire second fret and then having your ring finger on 4A and your pinky on 4D, like that, which is really not that easy to play, especially if you're just starting out, beginner, lower, intermediate, whatever. That's a tough one to get down. So what I like to do, play it like this, okay? Another thing that you may have noticed when you're calling out the notes in the key of D, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D, all the open strings on a guitar happen to be those notes, right? E, A, D, G, B, E. All those notes are in this key, so we can open up anything, any of these chords, and we just end up with cool sounding chords, right? So by this F sharp minor, Playing it like this, where it's just 4A, 4D, 2G, open B, and open E. We get a big, chimey open sound that is really going to sound good as a replacement for an F sharp minor 7 chord, right? Alright, so there's D major to the F sharp chord. We can keep the same shape. I just moved it two frets back to get to that E minor chord, okay? So again, we can really just go through these different open shapes and then just start experimenting by adding different open strings within them. Another thing you've heard all the time are these D major suspensions, right? I think it's really the easiest chord to kind of demonstrate uh, how suspended four chords and suspended two chords work. Basically all that is, you have this D major chord right here. Your middle finger is playing the F sharp. That is the third, right? D, E, F sharp. The third of a chord is going to tell you whether it's major or minor. But if we take the one right here, if we add our pinky to the third fret on the high E string, now it's a G. So we're replacing that third with the fourth note in the key. Therefore, it's a suspended four chord. Or we could open it up, and then that would be replacing that third with the second note in a key, making it a suspended two chord. Okay, so it's really easy. to kind of just move around and then just like experiment just by lifting fingers off chord voicings that you already know, because it's never gonna sound too bad because like I said, all the open strings happen to be in this key, which is why it's the key of 2020 and it's a key that everybody should learn for sure, all right? So let's just recap real quick. We've got all the main chords in the key. D major, E minor, F sharp minor, G, A, B minor, this guy right here, 
which we'll talk about more in a second after the recap for the extended Jazz People's edition of the video. And then back to D. The main chords in the key, we can do with this kind of like very similar arpeggio, climbing through the entire neck, uh, both horizontally and vertically. Again, starting on the fifth fret, we have five, seven, nine, down a string, seven. Start in that, that same pattern on the same string, five, seven, nine, down a string. Really great exercise just for like reaching. And then all of a sudden, you can kind of run these arpeggios into the pentatonic scale on B. Pass here, don't worry about it. Nobody plays bass here anyways, right? Now the last thing I want to talk about here is maybe this uh, minor seven flat five chord. C sharp, minor seven flat five, pointer finger on four A, ring finger five D, middle finger four G, pinky five B. Okay, this is the diminished chord in the key. The one that's really gonna force you to go back home, okay? So really, I think a great way to just kind of get your ear better is to hear the relation of any of these chords back home. Since we're playing in D the whole time, the tonal center of this entire video is in the key of D. So anytime we hit a D major chord, it's gonna sound like home. The relationship between any of these chords, whether it's the four chord, That's going to resolve in a slightly different way than maybe the five chord. Or even that F sharp minor. E minor. And then, of course, we've got, you know, that minor seven flat five. It's really kind of forcing us back there. So, understanding the relationship between chords and a key, how they kind of drive a progression, something that is insanely valuable to you because once you can start linking those together then i think you can make really interesting chord progressions potentially take them outside of a key which maybe we'll do more videos on different keys if you guys are into this kind of thing but uh yeah just really learn the chords in a key whether it's a key of d anything else again i love the key of d just because it really makes a lot of things easy as far as getting to those one fours and fives suspended chords sound fantastic and then you can always Jump from any chord in the key into that spot where it's either minor pentatonic or the major arpeggios, right? So, even if you want to play in a different key, say you want to play in the key of E, you can still just put a capo on the second fret and then use the same shapes to kind of use some of the advantages that this key offers uh, to different players and then just kind of have at it. So again, uh, thank you Close Guitars for sending the guitar over indestructible, like I said before. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to y'all soon. Thanks.